my eyes were closed and I was just sitting talking to God asking him saying Lord just let me into the heavenlies let me in to the divine place I just want to come near where you are and just be near you they said reminding me where I stand I said behold I stand at the door and knock if you hear my voice all you have to do is open up and let me come to where you are and then all at once I was swept up out of the church out of the seat out of my body it felt like every worry every frustration every weight that had been on my shoulders was lifted off like I had just broken through the constraints of the physical world and entered into true freedom for the first time in my life. This place was brighter than anything I had seen before. It was like standing on a star. It was more real than I could ever explain. And although I'd never been to this place before, I knew I was home. There was white light all around me, and it took my eyes a minute to get adjusted, but as I finally began to see clearly, I saw one man standing in front of me. It was my Jesus, my Savior, my Hero, my King. The one whose sacrifice had made it possible for me to even come to this place. But he had scars. He had deep scars all over his face and neck from where his flesh had been torn and shredded by the crown of thorns and, and the whip that had struck him for my sake. He had scars on his hands, deep wounds from where the nails had torn through him. He said, he said, I'm so glad you're here. Finally, I've prepared a place for you. Come, let me show you. And he, he held out his hand for me to take hold of it and follow him. Just as my hand touched his, I gently ran my finger across the hole in his palm. And he paused. I looked up and looking at the scars on his face and neck, I asked, did it hurt? And he turned toward me. He smiled knowingly and looked me up and down. And he looked all around at the place we were standing, seeming to just want to just take it all in. And he said, sincerely, it was worth it. It was worth it. He said, it was worth it. And to this day, I just can't get over the honesty in his voice. To think that the Son of God, the prophesied Messiah, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords would look at me and think that I was worth the death he suffered. That with, with every blow, as the nails dug deeper into his hands and his feet, he was crying out, this is worth it. That with every crack of the whip, as it tore flesh from his back, he was crying out, this is worth it. Or that as the rod struck his head each time, driving the crown of thorns deeper into his skull. And as the guards mocked and spit on the Son of God, he would be looking steadfastly at the big picture, with eyes focused and mind made up, simply declaring, you are worth it. I don't want to overcomplicate things. I think we can tend to add so much to the simple truth of Christ's heart that we lose who he really is. I also think that we take this simple truth lightly because it seems cliche or like it's too good or too simple to be true. But it is the cry of my heart that this would really sink in and begin to bear down on what you think you know about Jesus and that your heart would be gripped and fascinated in the revelation of his heart for you. The simple truth of Christ's heart is that he loves you unconditionally, unrelentingly, and passionately. And that when he looks at you and remembers the blinding pain, the public humiliation, and the torturous death he suffered, he cannot help but cry out, You are worth it.